there's a not so well kept secret about engineers. We love to soup things up. It doesn't matter if it's a car, an amateur radio, a computer. Give us some nice, well-engineered device, turn your back for a minute or two, and we're bolting on turbochargers, heat sinks, faster clocks, whatever we can dream up to make that thing bigger, faster, and more awesome. Uh, usually more awesome. I mean, I probably never should have messed with that Cuisinart motor. That was an uncomfortable dinner party. <laughs> but anyway, apparently somebody left Microsemi's FPGA engineers unattended for a while. Because the company has just announced a souped-up version of their popular Smart Fusion FPGA family. That's right. The new Smart Fusion 2 is a lot bigger, faster, and more capable than its earlier siblings. Somebody should keep an eye on those engineers. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today my guest is Wendy Lockhart of Microsemi, and we're going to get to the bottom of this new Smart Fusion 2 family and pull the covers back on all the cool stuff the engineers have done. Before we get started, I want to remind everyone that you can click on that Download Now button below your player. There you can download a free white paper that further expands on this topic. Thank you so much for joining me today, Wendy. Thank you, Amelia. Nice to be here. Today we wanted to talk about a new product that's being released by Microsemi. Smart Fusion 2 is the most secure, highest reliability, lowest power SOC FPGA. Okay, Wendy, that seems like a lot to claim for one single device. Can you walk us through it? Oh, yes. First of all, from a Microsemi perspective, we've been focusing for a long time on markets where power matters, security is non-negotiable, and reliability is vital. Specifically in high volume markets such as aviation, military, communications, industrial, and medical. These markets are the ones that really understand the needs of security, reliability, and low power. And these are the features that Microsemi FPGAs have been well known for in the past. So, Wendy, we've talked about Microsemi's products on Chalk Talk here before. Give us a little background on how we got to Smart Fusion 2 that we're going to be talking about today. Okay. Previous families of Microsemi FPGAs, especially Pro 3 and Igloo, were well known for their low power attributes. And Flash FPGAs are also well known for their SEU immunity, which leads to low fit rate and high reliability. Building on the Pro 3 family, we added ARM Cortex M3 and Analog in Smart Fusion, which allowed us to take reliability and low power into new applications, such as motor control and system management. Smart Fusion 2 takes us way beyond either Pro 3 Igloo or Smart Fusion. Okay, Wendy, let's get specific about Smart Fusion 2. Let's go over what we're going to be talking about today. Smart Fusion 2 SOC FPGAs extend our leadership in security, reliability, and low power into mainstream applications. First of all, leadership in low power FPGAs building on our Igloo heritage. Smart Fusion 2 devices are 100 times lower static power than the competition with the same performance. We have leadership in secure FPGAs where state-of-the-art security enables root-of-trust applications and radically transforms the usefulness of FPGAs in data security. We have leadership in reliable FPGAs. Microsemi FPGAs with SEU-hardened fabric and processor offer the only reliable device designed for safety-critical and mission-critical systems. Okay, so how does Smart Fusion 2 compare to what Microsemi has offered in the past? Smart Fusion 2 flash-based SOC FPGAs with the ARM Cortex M3 processor offer the most security, highest reliability, and lowest power. In many ways, we have upgraded what we had before to enhance our differentiators within the market, and at the same time have addressed market needs of mainstream applications. Mm -hmm. So, Wendy, what do you consider to be your main differentiators or differences since Microsemi's previous offerings? Well, first of all, we upgraded the ARM Cortex M3 processor, okay. which now runs at 166 megahertz and still leverages the on-chip ESRAM and EMVM. Okay. And we added embedded trace microcell and instruction cache to the processor to improve performance and debug capabilities. We also added additional interface peripherals, CAN, TriSpeed Ethernet, and USB that are demanded for current applications. On the security side, we added DPA hardening, AS-256, SHA-256, and random number generator to our inherently secure flash FPGAs. Great, okay. 
while on the reliability side, the zero-fit flash FPGA configuration is complemented by SEU protected memories throughout the device. Flash-based devices offer the lowest power FPGAs with 1 mW in flash freeze mode and 10 mW static power during operation. Okay, so those definitely seem to build on previous MicroSemi traits. What are the new aspects of this device that the market hasn't seen before for MicroSemi? Well, to be honest, there have been some required features that in the past we've not been able to meet for certain applications. Makes sense. With the Smart Fusion 2 devices, we now have equivalent performance to compete with mainstream FPGAs. And we've added 5 gigabits per second SERDES with PCIe, Zowie, XGXS, and native SERDES interfaces, as well as integrated DSP processing blocks in the FPGA fabric. So with devices with up to 120,000 LUTs, 5 megabits SRAM, and 4 megabits EMVM on chip. All right, Wendy, how does this look when you put it all together? Well, this is the Smart Fusion 2 block diagram. Okay. At the top, we have the microcontroller subsystem, similar to Smart Fusion, with the addition of the CAN, the USB, and the Gigabit Ethernet. All right. Around the MSS, we added uh, DDR and SERDES capabilities. And now the FPJ fabric is composed of four input LUTs with distributed large SRAM, micro SRAM, and math blocks for DSP processing. Great. Okay, so let's go back a second to the security, reliability, and low power you mentioned before. Good point. Design security is concerned about cloning, overbuilding, reverse engineering, counterfeiting, and tampering, where in data security, the data being managed by the device needs to stay secure. Without design or device security, it is virtually impossible to provide good data security. Okay, so how does Smart Fusion 2 solve this? Smart Fusion 2 devices offer programmable design security. Okay. Built-in design security is on all devices. Protection against tampering, cloning, overbuilding, reverse engineering, and counterfeiting. Very important. With no design or manufacturing overhead to build these secure devices. And supply chain assurance with digital certificate of conformance. Okay. Design protection is offered through anti-tamper detection with active zeroization. The bit streams are always encrypted with AES-256. Mm -hmm and secure programming with SHA-256 bitstream authentication, as well as an on-demand built-in system test for all non-volatile memories. So isn't the design only as secure as the keys that lock it down? Yes, security key protection is a very important part of it. Our keys are protected in a few ways. Cryptographic Research Incorporated, or CRI, provides DPA-resistant technology, and Intrinsic IT gives us physically unclonable function, or PUF, for state-of-the-art key protection. Ah, okay. The non-deterministic random bit generator for key generation and non-volatile key storage in encrypted form. Okay, so this covers design security, but you mentioned data security. Yes, really for data security, this device is a breakthrough. This device radically transforms the usefulness of FPGAs in security applications. Services we use within the device for design security are also available as security processing accelerators for advanced cryptographic applications. Oh, okay. AES, SHA-256, HMAC, ECC, and the random bit generator with countermeasures, as well as hardware firewalls available in the ARM AHB bus matrix. Protection of application-level cryptographic keys is provided through CRI's DPA-resistant technology and Intrinsic ID's uh, PUF technology. Okay. So it seems like security is well covered, but you also mentioned reliability. Yes, there are many safety standards these days that are driving new requirements into electronics, and many of these safety standards now have fit rate requirements. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've heard of fit rates before, but tell us exactly what that means. So for example, IEC 61508 in industrial applications has safety integrity levels if the failure of a particular system might result in major on-site injuries, it would be a SIL-2 level application. Okay. Design assurance levels in aviation, DO-254, would have certain standards a device must meet to be used in these applications. Makes sense. So how does MicroSemi FPGAs rate against these needs? Since MicroSemi FPGAs are flash-based, they have a unique advantage against SRAM devices. Flash devices have the highest configuration SEU immunity for ground and aviation level applications. Ah, oh, okay. Competitor devices from their own data have significant failures at ground level and would be prohibitive at higher altitudes requiring significant mitigation or redundancy techniques. So why is there such a difference? 
When alpha or neutron particles strike a flash-based device, the configuration of the device is not changed. If they strike an SRAM-based device, it can change the functionality of the device and require a complete reprogramming cycle to correct the error, losing significant system uptime and unacceptable risk in mission-critical systems. Absolutely. So, Wendy, we've talked about reliability and security. What's the power story here? Well, for certain applications, low power will always be a necessity. When you have static power as low as flash-based FPGAs, certain applications that would not be able to support SRAM power needs can now turn to microsemi FPGAs for a solution. Great. At equivalent device sizes, worst case industrial power, microsemi devices are 100 times lower static power consumption. Wow, okay. So what design tools can we expect to use with Smart Fusion 2 devices? We continue to have support from our longtime partners Mentor Graphics and Synopsys for ModelSim and Simplify Pro. With more emphasis now on Symfony Model Compiler, MATLAB and Simulink now for DSP-based designs with MathBlocks in the fabric. On the compile and debug support, we will have Kyle and IAR. And for operating systems, free RTOS, safe RTOS, embedded Linux from MCraft and Micrium. Great. So were there any unique tools that were developed just to support this device? Yes, given the complexity and configurability available within the device, our engineering team determined that System Builder was the right way to approach system configuration and accelerate customers' time to completion. Great. The System Builder wizard asks the user basic questions on system architecture, adds any additional peripherals into the fabric, and walks through configuration options for each selected feature. It then builds the complete space system and API correct by design. Great. I know we've talked before on other microsemi devices, but I think this is the one I am most proud to represent. Very nice. Smart Fusion 2 SOC FPGAs give our existing customers the larger size FPGAs they have been asking for, with the addition of features they need for their applications. Fantastic. Plus, opening the door to new customers who have never been able to work with us due to needing more gates or higher performance features. Smart Fusion 2 changes the playing field for secure FPGAs, reliable FPGAs, and low power FPGAs in mainstream applications. Fantastic. Okay, well, I think that's all the time I have for today. Thank you so much for joining me today, Wendy. Thank you, Amelia. And before we go, don't forget to click that Download Now button below the player to download a free white paper that further expands on this topic. For Chalk Talk, I'm Amelia Dalton. For more Chalk Talks, check out the On Demand section of eejournal.com.